Here we are again. It's Monday. It's Roll to Roll. I'm Benj. I'm Chase. I'm Dave. And we promise, we promise the classes are coming. It's not It's not like that set of books that you were reading where they tell you dragons are coming and the dragons never come. Like, we promise the classes are coming. Uh, but we got one more. We decided we want to talk about one more game mechanic for... We got into all the game mechanics, and that game mechanic is what you can do. The uh, what the kids are calling the action economy within the game. So within the game, uh, during a round of combat, or really any tense situation, if if you decided you know you were in like the 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 buildings collapsing, or you're running away from quicksand, or there's a volcano, or other you know run of the mill things that happen to people in a fantasy world. Uh, it breaks down what you can do into a couple of different kinds of actions. Uh, so Dave, uh, talk to me about how I move, because as we all know, I like to move it, move it. <laughs> all right, so movement in uh, 5e has changed considerably from 3rd edition. I don't know how they handled it in 4th edition. Chase may be able to chime in for me. But in 3rd edition, your movement was segmented. Basically, you could move... And then as soon as you took an action, you stopped being able to move anymore, unless you took a line of feats that let you move and attack and move again, which I always hated. 5th edition has simplified that in its way of simplifying things, that you can move and take actions and move in whatever sequence you want to. You can move 10 feet, take an attack, move 20 feet, whatever you want to do. Um, you can break up your movement between actions as you want to. You can Your standard move action is going to move your maximum uh, speed, which is usually 30 feet, you know, 25 for the smaller races, less if you've got heavy armor, more if you're a monk or a ranger or whatever. And then there's an action you can take called dash, which is basically the same thing as the old run in 3rd edition. You just move, get to move your speed again. Um, but doing that foregoes another action you can take. So you get do that if you want to, like, get closer to somebody who's far away from you. So that's basically all there really is for movement. Um... It's, it's really cool that you can break it up between attacks, and as we've seen it in playing, if you have a class that has like an extra attack f feature, you can actually like attack, move 10 feet, attack again, move 10 feet, and attack again at your DM's discretion. Of course, everyone reads the rules and interprets them a little bit differently, so your DM may not quite see it that way, but that's how we've interpreted the rules as they're written. So, Chase, you want to talk a little bit more about some of the other actions we can do? Yes, sir. So... I am going to talk about the most common thing you'll actually do in combat, which is your actual action. What is it that you're really focusing on doing during your turn? And now when I say combat, as Ben said earlier, it doesn't actually have to be combat. It could be, again, running from a collapsed building, running away from a dragon, breathing fire at you, whatever is going on. Um, but essentially, if we're going to talk about your main action in combat... We're going to start with the bread and butter, the main thing you're going to be doing, which is the attack action. Surprise, surprise. In a combat scenario, you're going to be attacking something. Um, this uses your attack action. It's the primary thing that you will spend most of your turn doing, because that is the hardest part of all the things that you can do, other than run away like a scared little chicken. Um, and uh, as Dave hinted at a little bit earlier, uh, certain melee, or not, I shouldn't say melee, martial classes, which we will get into later, can sometimes get extra attacks and uh, even some other things they can literally just re-go again for some fighters. Um, but essentially, that is your main action, attacking. Attacking is simply, you know, you stab the creature with a sword, you punch it in the face, you fire a bow at it. Any of those things where you are trying to cause damage to the creature, you are attacking it. Um, outside of that, there are some other actions you can take. To branch off the attack action, you also have casting a spell. Uh, some spells can be used in other actions, which we'll get to later. Um, ben is probably going to pick that one up a little bit for you guys. Um, but most spells, I'll say the common spell, also uses an action. Um, and that is when you would use that. Now, granted, not all spells have to be combat spells, so it doesn't have to be you lobbing the fireball. There are some utility spells like, uh, I don't know, Dimension Door, that also uses an action, but you blink to you know, a space, I think it's 30 feet away. Um, so casting a spell is also part of something you could do during your action. Um, there's also an additional list of things you can do for your action. Uh, I will say for this list that a bunch of these classes get the ability to use these as bonus actions, which again, uh, Benj will get into later. 
but for the classes that can't do it as a bonus action, um, any of these things you can do as an action, and essentially you burn your attack or casting your spell to do one of these things. Um, the first one would be the dash action, as Dave said earlier. It's literally just doubling your distance and either running double your speed to get closer to something or running double your speed to get away from something. Yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Um, another action you could take is the disengage action. Essentially, if there's a... Uh, you know what? I'll use the dragon scenario, you know? Um, there's a big, bad, ancient red dragon that you just woke up and you're level 5 and you're terrified. You can disengage from it, which is... It doesn't get uh, what's called attack of opportunity, which is something that gets to hit you when you're running away. You can instead disengage, and now it can't hit you as you're running away like a scared chicken. Because even though you're running away, you're running away smartly, you dastardly hero you. Um... One of the other actions is the dodge action. Essentially, you're just uh, getting ready without really running away so much as you're more of just getting ready to... Uh, what's the uh, dodgeball saying? Duck, dive, and dip? dip dodge, duck, duck and dip, dive. dive, and dodge. There you go. You're about to do that. <laughs> uh, the other one that I honestly have to say I see less common but is a good action to take is the help action. Um, and that is essentially you being a good person and removing your ability to attack something to help someone else out. Good on you, good guy. This is an action that the healer will probably come familiar with. The only other one I can think of is stuff that rogues would typically do. Uh, essentially, you, can, you don't have to be a rogue to try and hide. You probably won't be as good at it, uh, but you could burn an action to be like, I just want to hide and have no one see me. Um, and that's okay. You can do it. The game allows it. The only other real thing that's an action is reading an action, and this is going to kind of flow into Benj's uh, rant for you guys, but um, I'll go into it just a little bit, and I'll toss it off to him. Uh, reading an action is something similar to holding an action in older editions of D&D, &D, um, but they've changed it up a little bit. Now you literally have to say what you are reading an action to do, and what I mean by that is it comes to your turn. Uh, as Dave said earlier, you have moved... 30 feet towards the lever and now you have your action and you say I want to hold my action to flip this lever when the goblins run across the trap. So now you've explained to the DM exactly what you are holding your action to do and you can only hold your action. So that's a special little bit of note there. But some actions can be done as a bonus action and that is where I will toss it off to binge. Well bonus actions are Extra things that you may be allowed to do based on your class. There's not really a whole lot listed in the book as to what you could do as a bonus action. There's not a, a stereotypical bonus action. I guess maybe one exception would be to ready a second weapon. Um, that you're allowed to draw a weapon as part of your movement. But if you want to pull another weapon, you would need to use your bonus action to do that. There are some spells that have a casting time of a bonus action, which is really cool because if you're a spellcaster and you just want to, you know, go nuts, you can use a bonus action spell to do a little thing and then use your regular action to cast another spell. So you can kind of double cast. And I know I've seen a very famous game master on a regularly occurring show... <laughs> uh, impo on the internet, uh, imposing uh, a house rule that if you cast a spell on your turn, you casting a bonus action spell, you can only use a, a spell level up to second uh, spell level slot. I understand why he does that. There are some spells that start at fourth level that count as a bonus action, so I don't like that house rule. And to my knowledge, we don't use that house rule in our house. And if we do start uh, using that house rule, I will protest. <laughs> then be shot down. We do, not use it. we do not use that house rule. In and house. then we'll end up using that rule because I don't get to make the rules. But I will lodge a formal protest. Um, <laughs> I, will put, I will put in a formal complaint. Uh, real quick, the other thing you can do with a bonus action as a default is dual weapon fighting. Attacking with your second weapon is a bonus action you have to take. You don't just get the attack off your basic attack action. I was getting there. He I'm your, sorry. He stole your thunder. Man. I just I, like stealing your thunder. I mean, it feels if, so if, good. If we're stealing Binge's thunder, I also forgot one other action, which is the search action. 
you can you can search as part of your action. You know what? As part of your action, you can use an object. There you go. Look, now he stole my thunder. So there you go. You can activate an object, like I suppose a wand or a staff or a potion or an object that requires activation, whatever that may be. Oh, that's act that's actually something we should go into a little bit because um, there's been a lot of confusion about that, especially on online forums. Um, by the base rules, drawing and drinking a potion in combat, for the most common example being a healing potion, um, does use your action. I have seen a lot of house rules to change that. Um, do not be afraid to do it. I have my own house rule where players can get away with, I think it's, they burn half their movement. Something no, I think you, if you if you drink a potion on your turn, it's a bonus action for you. And as part of your movement, you can grab an item, um, like drawing a weapon or pulling a potion. So as part of your movement, not necessarily utilizing, um, like, feet out of your movement, you can you can pull an item and then a bonus action to drink it yourself. Still a standard action to feed it to somebody, uh, you know, maybe dying on the ground next to you. But anyway, we're, I'm done stealing your thunder. Thanks. I'm going to talk about reactions now. Um, okay. Because they've they've definitely changed things up since third edition, and again, Dave and I are not as proficient with fourth edition because, I mean, I played it like twice and said I'm going back to third. Uh, I don't know if Dave played it at all, but nope. Awesome. But I've read it. Uh, it used to be that you could do things like have an attack of opportunity in third edition. Which, if uh, through your threatened area, and that was any square around you on the battle mat, assuming you use minis, which I know Chase does, um, if they move into your threatened square <laughs> and then into another square you threaten, you were allowed to get a free hit on them because they're just, you know, they're they're dancing through your zone, man. You got to maintain your personal space. Uh, now, they've broken that down into you get one reaction, and that can be used similarly for an attack of opportunity, which are a little different uh, this turn, this time around. It's, it's actually when they leave your threatened zone. You can dance all around their personal space. As long as you don't leave that personal space, they don't get to offer you any reprisal. But once you leave that space, unless you use that disengage action that we just talked about, um, you get hit, or at least swung at. That uses a reaction. There are some spells that can be cast as a reaction, uh, most notably Counterspell, to stop somebody from casting a spell at you. Uh, you there are actually some spells you can cast as a free action. Uh, Featherfall you can cast as a free action because... <laughs> You really don't want to wait around six seconds while you're free falling. Um, <laughs> and and finally, as Chase alluded to, if you ready an action or hold your action, you uh, you use your reaction to do whatever it is that you said you were readying yourself to do. So if you change your mind and decide I'm going to take an attack of opportunity on this enemy that is leaving my threatened square, you lose your held readied action. Because you used your reaction to do it. Some classes get tons of things that they can do with their bonus actions and reactions. I, in our current game as a bard, have a lot of things I can do as a bonus action and a reaction. And I promise we'll talk about those when we talk about classes. But, you know, other classes maybe not so much. Fighters, their reactions are pretty much limited to, I'm going to use an attack of opportunity. Um... With, I guess, the exception of the uh, Eldritch Knight, because he can cast shield. But, yeah, that's pretty much it as far as the action economy goes. Um, any other thoughts, Dave? Uh, no. Chase? Chase? Uh, the only other thing I could think of is uh, remember that there's special types of movement, so sometimes you might have to deal with flying or swimming. Sure. Yeah, you know, there's, that's... Well, I mean, you'll know that you have a fly speed or a swim speed, so you just you gotta you gotta work. I guess there is some arithmetic involved there. You gotta do uh, some sort of a proportion if you have different different speeds. But beyond that, yeah. Cool. Well, uh, Dave, where else can they find us? 
Uh, they can find us at roll to roll blog.wordpress.com or here on YouTube, on the Facebooks, and Fantastic. on SoundCloud. Well, that's going to do it for us today. I'm Benj. I'm Chase. I'm Dave. Keep on rolling. Da, 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 da